Have you got a gas smell under bonnet? If you have, that suggests your car has a fuel leak. Car fuel leaks can be extremely difficult to track down, especially if it's only a small fuel leak. The occasional, very slight whiff of fuel under bonnet isn't usually anything to worry about. After all, there's plenty of it swilling around here. But I've been getting a fuel smell under my bonnet for some months now, every time I lift the bonnet. But at last, I believe that I've found the leak. I am certain that this will surprise you just as much as it surprised me. Since I couldn't find any split fuel lines, I figured that maybe the leak must be coming from a join somewhere. So what I did to track down this underbonnet fuel leak was put some clean white exhaust wrap all around all of the joints on the fuel rail and the fuel pipes everywhere I could find. Hoping that after a few weeks of driving, I'd find traces of dried up fuel in the cloth around the leak. And sure enough, the cloth around the pressure test valve is all brown and stained with dried fuel residue. Simple you'd think, the valve's leaking. It still had me puzzled though. I swapped the valve out for a valve from one of the adapters in my fuel pressure test kit. And I checked security of the valve and the security of the cap. Indeed, inside the cap, there's actually an O-ring down in there that locates on the end of the valve and helps to seal it up. So even if the valve's leaking, it's got to get past the O-ring and then it's got to get past the threads. So I made sure that the inside here was dry, that the inside of the cap was dry, put it all back on. A few couple of weeks later, still getting the smell and it's still leaking. But the inside of here and the cap showed no signs of being wet at all, even with the engine still running at the end of a fairly long journey. Well, anyway, the surprising bit, here it comes. I'm now convinced that the fuel leak is actually as a result of this joint and I'm absolutely convinced that that joint has got a pinprick leak. Here's a highly magnified view onto the uh, valve housing. Using a powerful magnifier and with the engine running, thus maintaining fuel pressure, I was actually able to see little spits of fuel coming out of this, what looks like a damaged area on top of the join. Under the warmth of the engine, they were evaporating away almost instantly. The leak was slow, so it wasn't dripping. I can only conclude that this joint mustn't have been made properly in the first place when the pipe was new. Who knows? knows how long this has been going on. So the obvious question next is what to do to fix it. Obvious you might think, replace the pipe. Well this pipe goes from here, this joint, round the engine, down the back and it joins into the main fuel line somewhere down in the depths there. Now you can buy this as a spare but guess what, it's over a hundred quid. I mean holy smokes. Obviously you can't just wrap a bit of PVC tape round it or a bit of duct tape. Well you can get all sorts of fuel tank repair kits. And what it led me to thinking about was some of this metal epoxy putty. So I went onto the Bostic website. Their suggestion for uh, a fuel proof leak was this product. So let's give it a try. So here we are a few days later. Sorry to have to report the attempted repair using the epoxy putty completely failed. So I'm going to revert to Old Faithful and use some Araldite steel. I've had considerable success in the past with ordinary uh, Araldite. I even once repaired a crack in a cylinder head on the rally car. It wasn't meant to be a permanent repair but it did last two rallies. The Araldite that I tried failed also so I tried a, a third method. I tried wrapping it in self amalgamating tape. Some sources of information reckon that self amalgamating tape is impervious to petrol but uh, I found out that it's not just carried on leaking and the petrol actually dissolved the tape so I'm cutting the valve section out of the pipe as luck would have it the pipe is exactly 10 millimeters outside diameter so I've been able to buy myself some petrol hose that's 10 millimeters inside diameter and I'm cutting out the section that has the valve and I'm fitting a piece of hose between the two remaining pieces of pipe it does mean that I will lose my pressure testing point but in 150,000 miles so far I've never needed to test the fuel pressure but if I do all I'll do is cut the hose between two pipe and fit a brass T-piece and connect a pressure gauge that way. When it comes to cutting this pipe and removing this section do not cut it with any kind of saw use a proper pipe cutter this is a, a mini pipe cutter which will handle 3 to 22 millimeter pipes these have a a wheeled blade and you turn them round and round and they gently cut into the pipe and sever the pipe without creating any swarf and they also create a small folded over end as well. 
and that's why you don't want to use a saw of any description. You don't want to create any sort any swarf that might then subsequently find its way into the pipe and then because of the petrol flow might find its way into the fuel injectors. The union at the fuel rail allows the pipe to come in from pretty much any angle. So I'm using that to lower the pipe down here a little so I can give this hose a nice sweeping curve round. I don't want to create any sharp corners where I might get a kink which might restrict fuel flow. And I'm also cutting it to get about three to four inches of penetration of the pipe inside the hose so that I get a good fuel tight seal. And then I'm going to push the hose onto the pipe with the aid of just a tiny dribble, and I do mean a tiny dribble of lubrication, which will help me to push the pipe far on. I'm holding the pipe with small Jubilee clips. They are actually Jubilee brand as well. They're size zero, which is uh, 16 to 22 millimeters. The outside diameter of this pipe is 18, so within that range. With the aid of the lubrication, push this pipe on as far as I can. The cut end of the pipe is here. I've got about three and a half to four inches on there. And then tighten down the Jubilee clips in two places. I'm going to use a little bit of lube on the, uh, on the thread there and just a little lube around the pipe just to help the uh, Jubilee clip slip on the hose and find its natural position. And then just tighten it down enough that you can just, just start to see it squeezing the hose. Don't go mad because we don't want the Jubilee clip to split the hose pipe. The only downside with Jubilees is that they don't actually give an even clamp pressure all around the hose, which is why I'm fitting two Jubilee clips and as you'll see, fitting them with the uh, threaded portion on opposite sides of the hose. Bit of excess tail on the Jubilee, just push it down. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have spotted this one-piece silicone top radiator hose, which deletes the plastic T. If that's something that tickles your fancy, there's a link in the description. And because I've altered the path of the fuel pipe, it'll no longer go into its original clipped position. So I'm tie wrapping it to this harness close to the harness clipping point, just to stop it wobbling around. And having got it positioned so that it can uh, lie naturally, finally tighten down the union on the fuel rail with your 24 millimeter spanner. And because this hose is now close to the top radiator hose, I'm also going to tie wrap the two together just so that they don't rub. Not tight because we don't want to crush the radiator hose, just enough to stop them rubbing. Start her up and check the leaks. Whilst you are checking for leaks, remove the vacuum pipe from the fuel pressure regulator, which will allow the fuel pressure to go to maximum 60 psi, even though the engine's idling. It run for a minute or two and then put your pipe back to restore proper idle pressure of 42 psi. Success! Not only have I cured my fuel leak, I've seen a significant uptick in my fuel economy. Job, job!